Okay, in this video, we're going to set up MFT transfers to S3. So let's get started. So step one, I'm going to create my IEM credential for S3. I'm gonna create the access key. And I'm gonna download that information. Second, I'm going to take a look at the uh, S3 bucket that I have configured. So I have a bucket here called tib demo. Has some files already, some objects in it already. Nothing particularly special uh, configured on the permissions. The block public all access is set to all. Um, Object uh, access control list is just for the count owner. And the bucket policy is uh, defined with my particular IAM user. Uh, nothing configured for the, I, for the access point as well. All right, so let's switch over to our right, command center. So log into command center, you're gonna add a server I'm just going to go ahead and modify an existing definition I have here. Uh, name your, your server. And then for the, we're going to ask for the IP address or name, uh, type in the, the bucket name. So again, the bucket name, in my case here, is just called tib demo. Select your server type as Amazon S3. For your Amazon S3 options, uh, select the closest region or the region where your bucket is deployed. And then in the server credentials field, uh, go ahead and provide your IAM credentials. and click on uh, add or update in my case. Next, you want to add a transfer. So go ahead, click on add transfer. Uh, we're gonna give a server file name. Uh, for this one, uh, in the use case that has been described where we wanna create some extra folder structure, um, we're gonna use this token uh, ampersand file uh, as the token to use. Select our user admin. Uh, let's select our transfer server AWS S3 demo. We'll select both. And we're gonna create a virtual alias that's called AS, AWS demo. And I'm also going to set up the allow create directory. Go ahead, click on add. All right, so log into your internet transfer client. And let's locate the virtual AS AWS demo. And there I can see the objects that are registered uh, in my bucket. And I can also at this point, go ahead and select a file. And we should observe file transfer complete successfully. If I go to my bucket, refresh, there's the file I just uploaded. Okay, so that concludes that portion of setting up MFT to connect to AWS S3. Uh, now let's focus on the second half. And the second half is going to be uploading files via the platform server through the uh, internet server and uh, through that transfer definition to basically uh, upload 
uh, you know, a folder structure. So let's go to command center and we're gonna go to manage DNI demons. And I'm gonna just walk you through a template that I have already set up. Actually, I'm gonna do a couple of little modifications to it. So let's, let's step through this together. So first you'll want to, actually, let's go ahead and do it this way. Uh, one way I describe this to, uh, to MFT administrators is uh, who are learning about the product, um, click on any one of these template names. And so when you click on it, it populates the template data window here. And we can go ahead and uh, modify the template name. And actually when I say modify, this is going to allow us to, if I say add, it'll add a new template to this list. So it says uh, the demo DNI template was added successfully. And if I look in the list here, here it is. So I click on it again, make sure it's populating the template data. All right. And you're gonna look for local directory. And so this first directory that we specify, uh, this is the directory that we will be scanning uh, or monitoring for new files or folders. I have created a directory on the desktop. So here's the directory on the desktop. C users administrator desktop S3 demo and it's uh, empty at the moment. Okay. Next line is the DNI command. So depending on which uh, operating system your platform server is uh, running on, uh, if it's Windows, it'll be FTMS CMD as the utility. If it's Linux, it'll be uh, CF send. Uh, one thing to do at this point is to go ahead and uh, figure out, determine is that command FTMS CMD in the path? If you type that at the terminal or, or uh, batch uh, prompt and prompt, and it comes back like something like this, that means it's in the path. If you get something else like foo is not recognized, then you need to do one of two things. You need, either need to add the platform server uh, bin directory to the path environment variable, or you can specify the full path here and say, uh, you know, ctipco, MFT, PS, uh, wherever you installed the, the software. Uh, the construct of this is the command line form of using FTMS CMD as if you were just running it from the, the terminal command prompt. So this is FTMS CMD slash TCP slash send slash file. Um, for purposes of this video, I am going to be using uh, specifications for the host and port uh, however, you could use a node definition to represent this. Anyway, uh, you can learn more information about the various flags uh, if you run the command FTMS CMD slash question mark. And if you have that, I'll put that to help that TXT file and open it up. You can see all the tags that are available. All right, uh, so we're specifying localhost here. Um, localhost is actually, um, this should be where you specify the IP or host name for your internet server. Uh, port, this is the port that's configured for your uh, platform server responder on the internet server. And this is a good point actually to go ahead and you know show you that quickly. So, and I'll come back to this template. So if I go up to administration and transfer servers, platform server, configure platform server, expand the box here for your internet server. You wanna make sure that the service is enabled and check which port you're configured to run internet servers, uh, platform server service. So here we have 46465. Okay. 
Next is uh, these parameters RI and RW. Uh, these are the uh, credentials that you, you will use to authenticate to the internet server. Uh, again, these credentials can be uh, part of the user profile. So when uh, you specify a node definition, we can pull up the, uh, the credential securely. Uh, that'll be a, a lesson for another video or uh, do it your own activity. Uh, and then the next uh, two parameters are the, the fo local file name, uh, which is the, the file that we want to send to the internet server. And the second parameter here is the remote file target name. Uh, note to users that use Linux, uh, this is a, a Windows uh, command that's structured here. Uh, on Linux, you'll have uh, LF and RF um, tag parameters. All right, so what we're looking at right here, though, is uh, what should be the virtual alias on the, uh, on the internet server. So I believe we created that as AWS uh, demo. Let's go take a look at that. Yep, AWS demo. So we provide that. And then we're gonna use a couple tokens. Um, since we wanna create the subdirectory structure of the uh, what's what's present basically in our root folder that we're monitoring, we do need to pass along that subdirectory. So we use the subdir token. Um, and then we pass along obviously the, the file name itself. Uh, set the subdirectory flag to yes. And success, su success, success, yeah, wow, I can't talk. Success action. Um, your options are leave, move, or delete. So let's go ahead and say, let's move that file if it's successful. And we're going to move it to this location. So we're going to move it to the desktop and S3 demo slash archive. And we're going to take the file name and append the date and timestamp to it. I created this folder already. Uh, this folder right here, S3 demo dash archive on the desktop. Uh, then failure action is leave, network action is leave. Um, you when, when these are set to leave, you we ignore the failure file in the network error file lines. All right, everything else should pretty much be left to default, although one recommendation for debugging purposes, go ahead, set the scan interval to 10s, All right, So it'll run every 10 seconds, the, the scanner on that folder. So let's go ahead, uh, click on update. Now, let's try this out. Let's go ahead and start. So click on the start here. And we get a notification. Template started successfully. Now as a note, you can check the logs for this directly through the UI. See if there's anything critical with the way that maybe there's a syntax error that we might need to catch. Um, everything looks good here. All right, so let's go ahead and try out our directory transfer. I would start off with a single file first, right? So let's just grab this file, which is a certificate file. Now what's supposed to happen is that MFT is gonna scan this folder uh, every 10 seconds, uh, but really it, it does two sweeps. So every 20 seconds, um, uh, the first sweep is to check, see uh, if the files, get that file's information second time, see if anything's changed. If nothing's changed, that file gets uh, sent off. And if we look now on our bucket, there's the new, the new file. All right, next, let's uh, step this up a little bit and we are going to grab an entire directory. So this directory has the folder pdni in and then a file in it called mftdemo.txt. So paste that in. Now what's gonna happen here? Um, again, we're gonna sweep this folder, we're gonna scan recursively. 
and uh, look for any files that need to be sent. The success action is to move the file. So we should see this file move. Uh, what will not happen though, is that the folder itself, pdni in, will still stay in place as part of the structure. Okay, so that file transfer, the, now, since we saw that file move, that means we transfer the file. If I refresh my bucket, there's my folder pdni in, and then there is my file itself. All right, and so I can grab another folder like this one. Now this one has uh, not just one subfolder, but there's pdni out, then process, and then two other files. All right, one file, second file, done. We take a look at our bucket and we've replicated that folder structure exactly here in our S3 bucket. Alrighty, that is all, thank you.